So first I'm going to make the rear wheels which are going to be fixed in place. So just to explain the plan, um, all of the pieces are sitting on this raised section um, but for the rear end uh, the rear wheel is going to come down to this level and I'm going to cut off these pieces and that should also help it swing a bit um, as he stands up and crouches down. So um, when I was making these pieces I cut out uh, this wheel arch before I stuck the foam on. So I have that piece here um, which still has the blue line um, of my floating height. So I've already cut one wheel out of that and I already know um, the floating height so this is a very convenient marker. Next thing was I cut this piece out which has a bit of an overlap from the wheel arch so that I can glue it from the inside and glue it level like this. And because I know <clears throat> how far down it's got to go with this blue line I can glue down to that blue line and this will make up the inner part of my wheel. Then I'm going to make up um, some more parts and glue them all together. So first I'll hot glue this piece on. So now the inner part of the wheel is glued on to my template. So this will be glued inside like this and now you can see it's going to be resting on this wheel and I no longer need uh, these little supports here which will be cut off. So the next thing <coughs> is to make this wheel kind of 3D. So I'm going to have two layers and then have some pattern in the middle with something stuck around the outside to make up the outside of the wheel. So all I did was cut another wheel of the same size and then decide my dimensions. So <coughs> This will be the outside of my tyre and then I need a bit of a tyre wall and then some wall of the rim. So I decided on one and a half centimetres uh, thickness. So this outside circle will be painted black which is the wall of the tyre and this will be painted silver which is the uh, wall of the rim and then I can make some spokes into here and bend them backwards to make kind of a 3D look. So first of all, I'll let me mark out those spokes. So I've decided to use six spokes because then I'll have six sections and all the angles are 60 degrees, which is a nice round number um, and easy to get even. So now that I've got the center lines marked, I need to decide how wide these are gonna be. Um, and I'm thinking around two centimeters wide. So now I'll mark um, a centimetre either side of these lines and that will be my two centimetre wide spokes. So now I have my spokes marked out I just need to cut along these inside lines here between the spokes and then along every straight edge and then that should give me uh, my six spokes three in the middle um, which can then be bent uh, to make kind of like a 3D wheel. So here it is with the pieces cut out and now you can see the six spokes. And on the inside I've gently scored um, along these lines here so that when I bend these spokes they'll have a line to follow. And the idea is is that this is going to sit uh, raised from the uh, inside piece uh, with some sort of wall and then I can bend these and glue them down and then put some sort of center cap on the middle so that the wheel should have a nice 3D feel to it. So to make up the inside and outside edges of my tire um, I've decided to use this stuff. It's some sort of vinyl. It looks like two layers uh, laminated together and it's very very flexible uh, but also it's super super hard, it's quite hard to cut so this should last well. So I've decided to make my tyres uh, three centimetres thick so it's going to be sitting about this kind of thick. Um, now for the outside edge 
uh, it's going to be quite easy to glue that stuff onto because I've got these two 5mm walls from the thickness of this foam board but for the inside edge I've kind of got nothing uh, to glue that stuff onto so because these are 5mm thick and I've decided on a 3cm thick wheel uh, that means I need some sort of 2cm thick supports in the middle so what I've done is I've cut six of these uh, they're just four centimeters by two centimeters of the same foam board and I'm going to glue all of them in like this and this will give me an inside wall which, which I can work with so first of all I'll glue all these pieces on so here's the wheel with all those support pieces glued into place which is surprisingly strong uh, once the glue is dried so now that these support pieces are here I can put in my strip of vinyl and stretch it out, glue that uh, to the support pieces and then that will make up the inner wall of my wheel. So now the uh, two centimeter band has been glued inside the wheel to the supports. So when we turn it round, it's making up the um, inner wheel. This will be part of the rim. And then when it's glued together, it'll kind of look like that. Now the only problem is, because this band um, is glued beneath the spokes, it's at exactly the same level as the inside of this foam board. So when you look at it from this side, you can see a layer of foam board, and then you can see a little kind of hairline gap, and then you can see the inside of the wheel. Um, which is okay, but it, it could be neater. So what I've done is I've cut some more strips of that same vinyl stuff, and then this is 2.5 centimeters wide. So two centimeters for the band and 0.5 centimeters for the thickness of the board. And the idea is what I'll do is I'll just glue in these pieces here on top. And you can see now we have a much smoother finish to the wheel, so we won't see this uh, hairline gap anymore and the wheel will look nice and smooth one metal rim like that so I just glue in six of these pieces now um, and then this part of the wheel is finished so now it's time to start the final finishing and painting so I asked Anthony what colour he wanted and he went through his toy cars and he chose this one. Now under the fluorescent light I'm under right now uh, I think it's coming out a bit pale on camera but it's a very yellowy gold, a very traditional muscle car kind of gold look and he likes the black stripes as well so I'll try to keep those, see if I can uh, mask those off. Um, so for material, for, for paint, I decided to try this uh, Liquitex acrylic spray. Now I was going to use acrylic anyway, and I was thinking of mixing up my own and using the uh, small air compressor that I have. But I decided to try this stuff, because I've been wanting an excuse to try this stuff anyway. And it's quite pricey. It's about 1500 yen to 1600 yen a can, which is what, 10 quid per can. Uh, it's not solvent based at all, it's still water based um, so it's a real pleasure to work with um, I wish I tried it before it's basically just pressurized air and the paint of the perfect consistency to spray in a can so it's very easy to apply uh, one can was enough to do all pieces in, in the one black can and uh, yeah, it's, there's no solvent in it, so there's no smell or odour at all, other than the usual smell of acrylic paint, which, which is actually very mild. So I sprayed all of these pieces inside the house uh, with no mask on, and there's no bad smells or anything. Uh, so it's very good to work with. Um, I recommend this stuff. It's a little bit watery when you spray, and it can run if you're not careful. So on the first coat, I had a few little runs um, and I lightly sanded them out and then smoothed them over with a top, 
top spray. Uh, but now I'm used to the paint. So this is the rear piece which is already dry. And you can see it's a very nice even coat, uh, that matte finish. The texture that you can see was texture that, that was there already from my uh, putty layer that I put on. And of course you can see the filler and stuff through, but it's good enough. And the finish is very nice and smooth, especially inside on that foam board. This is some masking I've put on because I know I need to do some gluing at that point later. So this came out lovely. Uh, I'm really pleased with this stuff. So this spray is working out really well. So first of all, I thought I'd spray the whole thing black. So I'll have a black base coat. That should really bring out the gold and give it sort of a, a richness. Rather than spraying it over white, it will tend to pale out. So it should be quite a, a deep colour. Um, this is the basic matte gold colour. Uh, you can see here. It matches this gold colour quite nicely. Um, it's a little bit uh, paler perhaps, a little bit uh, darker, but it's pretty good. And I also saw this stuff. This is a yellow colour and it's kind of a translucent colour. Um, so they claim that this is like a slightly see-through colour. Um, transparent, you can see. It's like a transparent yellow. So what I thought I'd do is I'd spray the gold colour first uh, with the stripes uh, masked out. Then I'll remove the masking tape and spray this over the entire thing. Which, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm hoping it will make the gold a bit more uh, bling, I suppose, a bit more reflective. Just to make it pop a little bit more. And then over the black stripes, it should give it, again, a bit of richness, a bit of deepness. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I think it's a bit ambitious to expect it to become truly translucent like it is here. Um, but we'll see how it comes out. And that's it really, that's my only colours. And then I thought for the windows they will also be black. So I've got this transparent grey and I thought once the rest of the car is done I'll mask out everything except for the windows and spray this transparent colour on top which might might give it a little bit of a kind of, you know, transparency and, and deepness uh, to that black. Um, so it looks a bit like a glass. Again, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we'll see. Um, I might also use this as a top coat on the wheels, because I've painted the alloy wheels silver. So I've already, already used one full can of black, and I've got these three as my colour coats, and I've got another can of black just in case. So I spent about uh, maybe 50 quid on all the paint, which is a bit much, I know. But I thought, why not? It's kind of fun using this stuff and learning how to use it at the same time. So these are the pieces which have been sprayed in black and they're drying. And then once these are dry, I can start to do the next coats. So now the painting is pretty much complete. And we can compare it to the toy car. So it's pretty much the same, just gold all over and stripes on the, uh, the bonnet and the boot. Um, so I didn't bother recording too much of the painting process because it's pretty standard stuff. After the black undercoat had dried I masked it all off carefully um, which took about 12 to 14 hours maybe, it was a full day's worth of work and then I just sprayed the gold parts which took a couple of coats and because it's metallic paint, um, it's a little bit tricky to work with. When you have runs, they kind of drag the uh, metallic pearls with them. So there's a few spots I had to touch up afterwards. Um, for the paint, uh, I just used this gold paint, um, which on its own was a pretty good match for the car. And it's a pretty good finish. And because of the... Um, few problems I had with a few runs here and there. I don't want to mess with it anymore because right now it's looking good so I'm not going to risk doing anything else. Which means I haven't even used this yellow can at all. I don't really need it. Um, and also for the windows 
I sprayed them with this translucent grey one, uh, but it didn't really make too much of a difference. There's a slight reflective difference compared to the black, but um, I mean, you really have to stare hard at it to tell. So uh, I didn't have to buy these two. Uh, that I could have saved myself 3,000 yen, what's that, 20 quid? Never mind, I'll use them for something else. So, apart from the spraying, what else have I done? Oh yeah, so I've attached the back wheels. Um, these were just uh, glued onto a piece of board, which was sprayed black, and then that was glued to the inside of the uh, wheel arch. And then I just cut uh, this disc and sprayed it gold. Uh, to hide the centers of those spokes. Um, these are just all hot glued down. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple stuff. Um, I've cut off these little uh, protrusions under here. Uh, you know, like this uh, black skirt, which is under here. Um, so now, um, as this piece comes down, this wheel hits the ground first. And because this piece is kind of rotating as he comes down, it doesn't matter if it hits the ground here or here. Um, because there's no protrusion, it easily rotates along the wheel. So as he gets into position, um, this piece sorts itself out on its own. If we had left these protrusions under here, this would hit the ground, it would be dragging along this piece or dragging along that piece and uh, it would cause lots of problems. So that worked out quite well. Um, I've still got to do the front wheels, so you can see the front wheels are a bit smaller. So this um, this outside circle, if you can just see the circle in pencil, is going to be the tyre, and then this is the rim here. So this wheel is noticeably smaller than the front, which kind of completes the muscle car look. If I just put that there, that will rest on like that. So I've still got to paint those front wheels. Um, the other thing I've done is we had a few test fittings um, to see how easy it was to transform and it seems to be working quite well. Um, I had to shave off uh, a bit more from these doors so you can see here this blue area where I've actually cut quite a big chunk out um, to make it easy to rotate over the top here otherwise it was catching here and causing lots of problems. So on both sides I've cut a bit out of there. Also I gave it a little bit more play at the back so you see there's a slightly bigger gap at the back and I gave it a little bit of a bigger gap at the front too. So I mean when you look at it you know from here those gaps really don't show so it's all good. Um, and that means it's got more room to open and now that we had everything in the right place um, I went ahead and I hot glued those velcro straps together because they had a tendency to come apart after a couple of transformations so um, it would just be too tricky uh, to leave them as velcro so everything is now permanently fixed into place uh, this is the final shape and design uh, the final dimensions so um, all I've got to do now is finish off these wheels and I've got to glue the four uh, tail lights in, into here. Um, I think I'm not going to bother, I was going to glue in a black piece of board behind here, uh, so this is one black piece across, but it turns out that this cutout is quite convenient for him to walk, because this whole piece swings down and this is resting against pretty much the backs of the knees. So this little extra bit of space, I noticed as he was walking, uh, was helping him quite a lot. If it was down to here, he'd be kicking it a lot more. So I think I'm going to leave this exposed. Um, I've got the black piece prepared, so I can change my mind later. It's like a two minute job just to glue that last piece in. So that's about it really. Okay. So I'll finish working on the uh, front wheels and glue the lights in and probably the next video I'll show will be the final costume uh, with Anthony inside it uh, transforming from robot to car.